Hello, calculus fans. We're going to talk about Stokes' theorem now. This is a three-dimensional analog of Green's theorem, which we talked about a little while ago. Remember that Green's theorem gives us a way of relating a double integral over a plane region to a line integral around its plane boundary curve. So when you deal with Green's theorem, everything lies in a plane. Now Stokes' theorem will relate a surface integral over some surface S to a line integral around the boundary curve of S, which will be a space curve. So it's essentially going to be the exact same idea, but we're going to live in multiple dimensions now. Let's take a look at a picture of an oriented surface with a unit normal vector n. Here is an oriented surface with unit vector n. So the vector is orienting the surface. Then you've got the boundary curve C that goes around in a counterclockwise direction when you look from the point of view of looking down on the surface. Okay, now there's a little, there's a little person walking around the surface. We're going to use that in the description in a moment of orientation. So the orientation of the surface induces what's known as the positive orientation of the boundary curve. So that means if you're walking in the positive direction around C with your head pointing in the direction of N, then the surface is always going to be on your left. So what Stokes' theorem says is this. So we're going to start with a piecewise smooth surface S. That surface is going to be bounded by a simple, closed, piecewise smooth boundary curve, and that curve has positive orientation. And let's suppose we have a vector field whose components have continuous partial derivatives on an open region in R3 that contains S. In other words, everything that we're dealing with is nice. Okay, the main thing of what the theorem says is that the line integral of f going around the curve is equal to the surface integral of the curl of f along the surface. Now remember that the line integral of f is equal to the line integral of f dotted with the unit tangent vector. And also remember that the surface integral of the curl of f is equal to the integral of curl of f dot the unit vector. So the second surface integral is where we're thinking of it as a surface integral of a scalar field. Here's what we'll say about this. This means that Stokes theorem tells us that the line integral around the boundary curve of S of the tangential component of F is equal to the surface integral of the normal component of the curl of F. Now sometimes you'll see the positively oriented boundary curve of the surface written as ds. That's the same d that we use in partial derivatives. So you could write Stokes' theorem like this. The surface integral of the curl of F is equal to the line integral along the boundary of the surface of f. Now there is a cl very close analogy between Stokes' theorem, Green's theorem, and the fundamental theorem of calculus. In Stokes' theorem, there's an integral involving derivatives on the left side of the equation, keeping in mind that the curl of f is a form of a derivative of f. And then the right side, involves the values of f only on the boundary of s. This is exactly the same thing that happens in Green's theorem, and it's exactly the same thing that happens with the fundamental theorem of calculus. Now let's think about the special case where the surface is flat and lies in the xy plane with upward orientation. There, the unit ve normal vector is k. So our surface integral just becomes an ordinary double integral. And in that case, here's what Stokes' theorem looks like. In the end, you end up with the surface integral of the curl of f dotted with k. Remember that the k component of the curl of f is just dq by dx minus dp by dy. And so then what you'd get on the right-hand side is just what you get in Green's theorem. 
So all that serves to illustrate that Stokes' theorem is a higher dimensional analog of Green's theorem. It's really doing the exact same thing. Okay, that's all for now.